episode of Just Another Year Chicago. Happy Friday. My name is Dick Brody. I am joined alongside my co-host and good friend, London Beth. And today is the last Happy Friday without NFL football till February. Yes, today, uh, September 3rd, 2021, we are going over what seems to be the hottest topic among Chicago Bears fans. When is Justin Fields going to start? We got our opinions, our reasoning, and further thoughts and other roster move news. Rodney Adams, He's back. But before we dive into it, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Stupid Car Tray. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over? Look no further than the Stupid Car Tray. Proudly USA made, Stupid Car Tray makes your passenger seat or couch a level surface for all transportation and couch potato needs. Visit www.stupidcartrade.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description. Stupid Car Tray saves the day, especially for me every day when I'm driving into the office. Right now, they have a buy one, get one free on their classic series. Make sure to head over there, get a car tray, and listen, you don't even need anything else other than that to get to the office. So, Nick, let's get into it. Let's talk about the hottest topic in. Chicago sports right now. So like London said, this is hot. Everyone talk every single day. It doesn't matter if it's a good day or a bad day. Somehow, some way there is a tweet. There is a post. Doesn't matter that Justin Fields is when is he going to start? And after the evaluation of the preseason, the fact that the season's starting next week and Andy Dalton is still the starter, we want to give our insight. So I'm going to start first. London's going to hit on some of my points. He's going to bring up his points and I'm going to go into his points. So just to start off the bat, Justin Fields, from my opinion, is still developing. He's, he is athletically there. There is no doubt about it that he could be an NFL starting quarterback strictly from athletic ability. 4.4440, can throw the ball 70 yards on a fly accurately, uh, can hit wide receivers on the run, just can make it work. There is no denial of that. But I think that he needs to see a full NFL speed game in regards to having all the ones on the field and not on the sideline. He's seen the twos, he's seen the threes, and he sees some of the ones. He does not understand. And again, these guys are not going full speed. They're not bringing out all the trick plays. They're not doing anything as serious. The, the officialing is a little bit less strict. I think Justin Fields needs to see an NFL game for himself. He has only seen the preseason, which isn't the best of the best on the field again. Now, the Bears need to also evaluate their offensive line. They need to make sure that they can protect Andy Dalton. Because if you can protect Andy Dalton, Justin Fields is a cakewalk. The guy can run if he has to, gives time in the pocket. If you protect Dalton, who needs more time in the pocket, you can protect Fields. Fields needs to also get better commanding in the huddle. He needs to be able to change plays at the line without calling timeouts. A big problem with Matt Nagy's offense last year. And everyone, I know, I know everyone's singing in their head right now that's a diehard Justin Fields fan. Well, he can't do that without game experience. London, nowhere did I say that he is not going to get game experience before he starts. There is no doubt that Justin Fields is going to get thrown into games this year. I am not really not one bit that the Chicago Bears are likely going to rotate him with Dalton on certain plays, depending on the game situation. If the Bears are blowing out a team, yeah, throw Justin Fields out there. Let him get garbage time. Going to test him in certain situations. And also, again, learning from a sideline perspective how much faster the NFL is in the regular season compared to the preseason. Finally, my last point before I give my prediction, David Carr of CBS Sports, I said this yesterday, is saying do not throw him in there yet till you know your offensive line, till you know he's able to call plays, because David Carr's rookie season with the Houston Texans, number one overall pick in 2003, was sacked 76 times in a season. Do the math, folks. That's almost seven sacks a game or I'm sorry, six sacks a game, right? It's a, it's just an absurd. Okay. No, we're going to go back five sacks a game, five sacks a game. Sorry about that. Not the, not the greatest on, on the fly math. As we can tell, I'm working on the pronunciation of names. Next subject in school will be math, but anyway, five sacks a game. That is absurd. That Khalil Mack once had five sacks in a game, but that's happening every single game against David Carr. Do not let that happen. Justin Fields. Obviously David Carr did not pan out in the NFL. A lot more reasoning to that. We think Justin Field obviously is going to pan out in the NFL, but a lot to consider from that standpoint. So my prediction when Justin Fields start is going to be game eight Halloween bears versus the 49ers at soldier field. Why this game? I think that Justin Fields will get enough, get enough experience. 
We'll have eight more weeks to uh, technically nine more weeks to learn the playbook, learn how to command the plays, learn how to pra- handle a huddle. It gives him time. I think week four, a lot of people are saying, throw him out there against the lions. I think that's too soon because you have other te- difficult teams that you're going to have to play. Um, you know, I'm going to pull up the bear schedule in a second while we're talking, but just the more time you give Justin Fields, the better. And again, you obviously you don't want to sit him out forever, but you know, week four against the lions, that's great. Not the greatest team, but then you have the Raiders, you have the Packers, you have the Buccaneers, and then you have the 49ers. You don't have an easy schedule walking in after that uh, lions game. And yes, he has to get the experience. Totally understand that. But I feel like that this is going to be the opportunity also for the Niners. I think it's just a great opportunity for the NFL as a whole. The Niners can throw Trey Lance out there who, who the Niners passed up on Justin Fields. Just want to say that it just, so if Justin Fields were to rip up the Niners and Trey Lance were to struggle against the bears, I think that it just works out beautifully. But again, Justin Fields is going to get that experience. He's going to get that, you know, practice in, he's going to learn the playbook even better overall. I think the halfway point technically now, I mean, obviously it's 17 games now is the perfect time for Justin Fields to go in. So London, before you jump into your prediction, what are your thoughts? Yeah, Nick, I mean, those are actually really, really great points. And a lot of it has to do with what we see um, with the news of of, uh, Justin Fields every single week and what people talk about on when he should start. I'm going to be first and foremost, I, you know, on Twitter on you know, on this podcast and a lot of things, I, I have been definitely taking shots at the blue checkmark people that are constantly like, he needs to start week one. He needs to start week one. Like we we're our season's going to be completely ruined if we don't start him week one, like all this stuff. And I think a lot of it has to do with just like what we always talk about is that, you know, clickbait, you know, they want to get the likes, they want to get the shares, all that kind of stuff like that. Um, but Justin feels like you said is still developing. He's not ready. Okay. He has just as of the second week in a trading camp, he finally figured out the entire Chicago bears um, playbook, which is a very, very extensive, hard, thick playbook um, under Matt Nagy. All right. He is still progressing. And like you talked about his ability to call audibles at the line, to read the defense, to do all that kind of stuff. And I agree with you that he was going up against, you know, maybe one or two, you know, one or two players that might start on a team, but mostly it was against the second and third defenses in the preseason. And so reading those defenses really was at just kind of a base level comparative to what he'll see against a team like the, uh, like the LA Rams week one. So that is my biggest, like, that's my biggest concern is with what we had in Mitchell Trubisky, who was an athletic player, you know, didn't have the arm of Justin Fields, didn't, you know, didn't have a lot of the attributes and the leadership stuff that Justin Fields has, but he was athletic. And his biggest problem was, was he never fully figured out because of what happened in college at North Carolina, how to read defenses, how to call audibles. And it was pretty much just wire to the head you know to the headset in the in the in the thing the playbook gets or the play gets called he goes up there snaps it it was completely predictable I think that's what they're trying to get away from. And a big thing that it was really funny Justin Fields actually kind of talked about I think during his Bose uh advertisement or something uh and it was kind of like floating around twitter and i said it if you go back and 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 watch our podcast i said it about a week ago i think this team has the potential this year if the offensive line gets healthy and figures it out and with the acquisitions of guys like jason peters at left tackle i think we have the uh players to have a top 10 offense in the nfl okay and i i I told everybody that halfway through the year I think we're going to be sitting really, really pretty with our offense. Yes, that does include what Justin Fields will bring to the team. So going into that, he should not start week one. And Nick, I think nope. you and I both agree on that. I think everybody I out there that thinks he should start week one, comment comment below why and try to change my mind. And I guarantee you, I'll comment back and we can have a debate about it, but you will not change my mind. And you cannot say just because of his athletic ability. Yes, and yes, you, you can't say that. That, and, is, and, that is, that's an easy one. We've already yes, said it. We've yes, already said yes. it. And I will say, and I will say this first and foremost, the other thing, Nick, that I fully agree with you on is the development of our offensive line. Let Andy, and I I agree with David Carr, even though he was kind of a tough quarterback in the NFL, but he's a really good analyst. Do not. And I I think Kirk or Kurt Warner actually on his podcast on YouTube talked about the same thing. He said, do not put Justin Fields out there until you have this offensive line put together, because if he is running for his life, it's going to affect his ability to read defenses and actually make plays with his arm. And he'll only be 
reliant on his, you know, athletic ability. And that's like what happened with RG three and other quarterbacks like that. So, um, I, I fully agree. I'm going with kind of around the same date um, for um, Justin Fields starting, but this is what I'm going with. I have, they have the LA Rams to start week one. The LA Rams were the number one defense in the NFL last year. Then they have the Bengals, the Browns and the Lions, the bang or the Bengals were the 28th ranked defense. The Browns were the 21st. The Lions were, I think the 26th. And then we have the Raiders. The Raiders were the 25th, I think. So we're sitting like mid to high 20s after the LA Rams and then before the Packers. I think that they're going to keep Andy Dalton in there. I think those are really good games Andy Dalton can win. Um, I think the Browns defense is going to be a little bit better, but I still don't really trust that team. And we have a very good run defense and they're a very run heavy team. I think we beat the Bengals. I think it's a close game against the Browns, but if our, you know, if Hakeem Hicks and Eddie Goldman and those guys are healthy, I think we stop the run on the Browns and we squeak that one out. We beat the Lions. I don't think the Raiders have a very good team. So the, the game that I'm looking at, okay, is I, I, if we come out of those two, four, five games, three and two, or even, four and one um, and maybe like just thinking. lose one game. My like game is the October 17th, uh, two days after my birthday against the Green Bay Packers. And now the reason why I want to say, the reason why I'm picking that as the first game for Justin Fields to start is not only because it'll be hugely televised, it's on Fox, like it's against the Green Bay Packers, the whole nine yards, is because we, for the since 2018, have been getting our absolute asses kicked by the Green Bay Packers over and over and over again. And to win this conference, you have to beat the Lions two times. You have to, you know, we've been sweeping the Vikings. Okay. But the Packers have been getting the best of us and we can't even, you know, break, you know, one and one or, you know, beat or sweep them. We've been just getting blown out two games each, each year. And that's something that we can't do to win this conference. So I think that there's a spark there. I think that we go in, we put Justin Fields in against a Packers defense that I'm really not that scared of, except for maybe their corner Jair Alexander. I'm really not that nervous about their defense in general and maybe, maybe Amos and stuff. Um, But other than that, I think they have a kind of a, you know, weak linebacker core weak D line, we put Justin Fields out there in prime time at a, you know, at, I think it's a noon game, um, you know, under the, you know, under the, you know, with all the crowd and all that kind of stuff, he goes out there, he balls out, he beats the Packers. And then I'm telling you, we will hand him the keys to Chicago and ride off into the sunset. So that's what I'm, that's what I'm predicting. I love your prediction because that game is also in Chicago. I think that Justin Fields first starting game should be in Chicago. It should not be on the road. It I should agree. be in Chicago. But also, here's a here's a here's something that I've I've wanted to bring up in regards to the schedule. The Bears have the third hardest ranked schedule in the NFL. But the thing is, a lot of people don't consider like the actual breakdown of that. It's offensive wise. Yeah. You look at the offenses that we're going to play. The Rams, not a bad offense, not great, mm-hmm. not bad. The Bengals on the on the ground, which also, by the way, I don't see the Bears. I think the Bears are going to respect Andy Dalton enough to let him play against his former team and hopefully rip it up, especially like you said, a bad defense. Uh, but the Browns, very good offense. You know, just very, very good offense. Lions, no. Raiders, yeah, they could rip it up if they really mm-hmm. wanted to. Uh, their, their offense is definitely their strength over their defense. Packers, obviously. Buccaneers, obviously. Niners, yeah, they have a pretty good one. Steelers, Big Ben's always a problem. Ravens, Lamar Jackson. And then you have the Lions again. But then you have the Cardinals, Kyler Murray. Then you have the Packers. Like, the Bears have a hard schedule offensive-wise. Luckily, the Bears have a very good defense. It evens it out. So that's what analysts like also want to do. They want to scare – like Bears fans like don't realize is that we have a good team. We can take down these teams. We can win these games. And that's, that's, that's not being optimistic. That's just looking at the facts. You put a good defense against a good offense, you're going to have a good game. You put a good offense now in Chicago Bears against a bad defense, that offense in theory should score. And if Matt Nagy's theory is right about three to four years to develop his offense, he's had the guys for three or four years, minus Justin Fields and Andy Dalton, should work. Should work. 2018 could happen again, folks. And I just want people to get excited about it because I'm excited about it. I can't say it enough. And people, every single time I say the Bears could go easily 11 and six or uh, 12 and five, I literally look like I, I, I don't, people look at me like I'm a mummy. Like they just yeah. think I'm absolutely nuts. But I, I, London, you see what I'm saying. I see what you're saying. I think that's a good prediction. I think that'd be a much cooler game for Justin Fields to start. No doubt about that. Um, but 
We'll have to see what the record is. If the Bears are 0 6, there is no doubt about it. They should throw Justin Fields. Yeah, no out doubt there. about it. No, there is no I think doubt. If they about even it. go 0 4, then he might get popped in. Um, but I don't. I don't see us losing. Like I think Andy Dalton is a good enough quarterback where he can beat. He, honestly, I think he can beat the Rams, but he can definitely beat the Bengals. He can definitely beat the Lions. They can definitely beat the Raiders. Um, the Browns again are a little shaky for me. So if we're three and two going into that Packer game, we need that boost. We need to get to four and two, especially then we have what the Broncos, the 49ers, and then the Ravens. Like that's a pretty tough schedule after that. That's a huge game for us to stay in contention in the, the conference Broncos. and not only for the playoffs. Not the Broncos. We have the Steelers, Ravens, Lions, Cardinals. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. B- uh, Buccaneers. Buccaneers. My B- bad. Buccane- Buccaneers. No, no, no worries. No worries. Two different quarterback situations in yeah. regards to that. Um, but yes, so I totally agree with that. So I'm going with my pick. Eighth game, 49ers, Bears at Soldier Field. London is going game six, uh, Packers at Bears. So both Soldier Field games would be huge. Again, the weather is that fall. Like it's getting the bear weather. It's getting there. Um, so overall... Great conversation, London. Love love the energy. I think you guys should have energy too. Put below when you think Justin Fields will start. And if you have a legitimate argument for week one, we want to read it. We want to understand it. And as you see, we do reply. So stay tuned for that. Uh, one quick announcement that I know a lot of fans are going to be happy about on this Friday. Happy Friday. Rodney Adams is back on the Chicago Bears. He is in the organization. He is on the practice squad. They were able to work out a deal with Rodney Adams. So good for him. Very excited to see him back in Chicago. Again, he is not Allen Robinson. He is not Darnell Mooney. He had a very good offseason, and I'm praying that he finds a way to bring that preseason into NFL when he gets the opportunity again. But do not expect him to come up to the NFL roster during the season. He is a practice squad player. So best of luck to Rodney Adams. But We still have one spot open on that practice squad roster. So stay tuned for that. We will have that update next week. And there's no Bears football this weekend because starting next week, Monday or technically, yeah, Monday at 12 a.m. So right after 11.59 on Sunday, the NFL regular season is back. So with that, thank you very much for joining this episode of Just Another Year Chicago. My name is Nick Brody, joined alongside London Beth, and we will see you guys on Monday. Tired of your pizza topping sliding, office coffee distracting you while driving, grease and other stains getting on your seat, or you're just enjoying a game on the couch and don't want to lean over, look no further than the stupid car tray. Proudly USA made, stupid car tray makes your passenger seat or couch a level surface for all transportation and couch potato needs. Visit www.stupidcartray.com and use discount code J16 to get 16% off your entire order. Link in the description.